Hi, my name is Aaron Runk and today we're going to be doing a setup on an Akuma Crown. First thing I'm going to do is I've powered up on the back side of the machine. I'm going to come up to my control panel and I'm going to push control on. As this is coming on, you'll see your light come on. It will go back off during its power up process and then it will come right back on. During this time, this machine is reading all of its system controls and uploading, uploading everything that it needs to function correctly. Okay, my light's gone off. Everything should be coming back on for a restart. Once everything comes back on, it will give me an, uh, a message to open up my door. Okay, so the machine has come on. It tells me the emergency stop is active. I will hit the switch and I will push my control on one more time. You'll hear a loud audible bang. It might scare you a little bit. Sometimes it's not as loud. That's your motors kicking on. Now you'll see that it says, please open the door. And then I will just close the door. Once I've opened and closed the door, my alarm has gone away. On this machine, you will not send the machine home because this machine is always knows where it's at. It has pulse, pulse motors on the back of it, so it knows exactly how many pulses it is from where it was set for its zeros. So, with that being said, all I need to do is load my material, which I have already done, and I need to go through and start setting my tools. So, before I set my tools, I'm going to load my program to find out what tools I need to load into my machine. This machine uses an old floppy on the side of the machine with the silver disc facing you, okay, I will pop it in there and close my door. I will come back to my screen. I will come up into the Edit AUX. When I click that, should go into there. There we go. Down here on your NC panel, you have an Edit Lock a lock and an unlock. Make sure that you're in the unlock position so that you can access all your controls. With that being said, I will come back to my edit AUX and I will go into extend. If you notice I'm going over, I will hit extend one more time until I see MS-DOS. Once I see MS-DOS, I will highlight MS-DOS and then I will go to extend one more time. Once I hit extend one more time you will see program input and output I will go to program input and I want to look in my floppy drive index so I will look in my floppy drive index at this point in time it is loading to look inside of it once it has come up I will see all the programs that are loaded on my floppy drive. Notice that before I put this into my floppy drive, I put my program on the floppy as an 02533. And there's not a .txt after it. It is a file type format. So all I have to do is cursor down to highlight it. I will come over to the right button and I will push it once to select it. And then I will hit right again to put it into my control. When I do this, it will take a second. And seeing it, the copy is finished. It is now in there. Now, I want to go into my auto mode to select this program. So I will go into auto mode, program select. When I push program select, it takes me to a familiar screen. However, this time I want to push memory directory one md1 i will push manual directory and if you notice i'm going to come down to my program that i just loaded into the machine i highlight it i will come over and push right it selects the program and then i will hit right again to see what's actually there so when i come to my actual program page you will actually be able to see everything my part program my part program will show me that this is the correct program that I want to use. Before I loaded this in there, I did not have a percent, percent, percent sign above the word Akuma or a percent sign at the bottom of my program. I simply have Akuma and M30 for program end 
rewind. So now I know I have my right program. I need to see what tool I need to have in my machine. I have tool five is going to be my VNMG 432. So I'm going to open up my door to see if my tools are indeed in there. Opening up my door, I will see that I have tool three active as the VNMG that I want to be using. So I will close my door and I can edit my program to change it to what I want to do. To change a part of my program, I will go back into the edit, AUX, I will hit F4 soft key for edit, I will go into the directory index, I will select my program and hit right enter to select, and then I will hit right enter to highlight. From here, I can edit anything in my program. For example, I want to change this to tool number 303. Tool 3 will call up, and then the geometry 03 for the tool will also be called up. Once I am done editing for this tool, I simply go edit, quit, and the cue comes on and I am done. However, once I am done, I will come back to my auto and I will select my program again the same way that I did by going into the directory, cursoring down to my program, write once to select it, write again to see it. Now when I come down, I can see that my edit was correct and that my edit is the active program that I'm using. Okay. So with this said, I'm going to call up tool number three. On this machine, I will go into a manual mode, and then I can come down to my tool index. On this machine, you can only index one direction. So I can push and hold the tool index button to have continuous motion, or I can push it once, and it will change. So, let's see if this will let me do it with the door open. So as you can see, I can turret my index, or index my turret, until I find the tool I need. With the door open, I can only do one at a time. So, the insert I'm actually using is going to be a DNMG, which is fine for what we're doing. So I'm going to pull that tool up to the active tool. Once this tool is active, I want to set the work offset first on this machine. So to do that, I'm going to handle up to the machine in the Z axis. I have to go slow because my machine door is open. See if it'll let me get away with it going a little bit faster. Any faster than this and the machine will alarm out. All you have to do is hit reset and continue on. Also, if you want to close the door, you can do that as well. So now that I'm close, I will switch to my X axis and I will come down to the face of my part. Once I get close to the face of my part, I will then go into a smaller increments to come down. Now you can do this two ways. For this demonstration, I'm going to come up close to the face of the part. The other way you could do it is to turn on your spindle with the door closed and take a small face cut on the face of your material. For this example, I'm going to say that I am really close to the face of my part right there. Now that I have that one tool, which is my main tool, remember that, my main tool, I'm going to set the Z location for my machine. To do that, I'm going to come up to my zero set page if you'll notice on my zero set page these are some wildly big numbers i will never change my x axis because that is the center of spin on this machine however i will set the z location of my face now to do that i will go set up oh, let's go let's go calculate zero right enter when I do that if you notice it didn't change by very much 
but it did change. Now, for example, if I hit set zero input, it's gonna eliminate that all the way, it's gone. So don't fret, all you're gonna do is hit calculate, zero, right input, and that number is now back into my controller. Now, the reason why I said to remember this is your main tool is because once this tool set, when I turn it to another tool and bring it to the face of my part and I set its location, it will only be the amount off from my main tool. So if it is plus 100 thousandths from where the main tool's location is, it will show a plus 100 thousandths. Vice versa, if it is further in when it touches the face of the part, it will show as a negative. I will show you an example. First, we want to move off our part. To do that, I'm going to close my door. And I want to send her home. Now, home on this machine isn't necessarily home. It's at a limit. So if I look up on my screen, I show that I have a limit light is on. If that limit light is not on, it will not index, it will not turn on, it will not do anything. I need to be at a limit, either in the X or Z. In this case, I'm going to move back a little bit in Z before I turret my spindle, or uh, orientate my turret. So I will call up another tool. I will set a threading tool. Okay, now threading tool, I'm going to set on the side of the tool. So I will bring it towards my part, get there kind of quickly. I'll open my door in just a second, okay? And where I need to be, I'll come down to a slower increment. Okay, I am now touching the side of my part with the face of my insert. So, with that said, I will come back up to my controller. I will go to my tool data page. So from here, this is tool so on tool number 10, I will come down to the Z location. Notice how I have my threading tool active. I will push calculate, which I will have to hit extend first. Calculate zero right. Now if you notice, it was further in. So that means that tool is a little bit further in on the turret. So it was only different by five thousandths and five tenths from where tool one was. On tool one, or I'm sorry, tool three, I am not going to change my Z because that Z is zero. It is my main tool. That might not make sense. If you have more questions, come see me. I will further explain. Now I want to set my X. To set my X is very simple. I will come up, come over, at this point in time, I can come down and touch my part with a piece of paper, or I can turn on my spindle with the door closed until it makes a line. In this case, for demonstration, we'll say that I have touched the OD of my part. I will come over here, and I will hit calculate. However, I'm not gonna hit calculate zero. The material that I'm using right now is one inch in diameter. So I will calculate one inch diameter and then I will hit right. Once I hit right, you'll notice that I have moved up from the center of rotation exactly a half inch from the center of rotation, which is one inch 667 thousandths in the machine, okay? So I will do that with all my tools, including the first tool that I set. So I will come back over and I will show you that with the other tool as well. I am at a safe place. I am at my limit switch. I have my tool active. I will open up my door. Now when the door is open, my door interlock must be on the open position or else it will not let me move. So I will come in and I will do the same thing with my first tool. If it does alarm out, we're going too fast, you simply just hit the reset button. 
See how I've alarmed out? I will simply come over here and push reset, and then I am good to go. So again, for this demonstration, I will come close to the offset of my tool. I am now touching the outer part of my material. I will come back to my tool, tool data page. I will come up to tool number three, which is the tool I'm using, and I will do the same thing. I will hit calculate for a one inch bar, and I will hit right enter. With that being said, it went up from the previous material that I had that much. Notice how I will not set the Z because I have set the Z on my zero set page. Now that all my tools are set, I can move away from my material. Until I hit my limit switch. From here, I am ready to run the part. Once I have gone through and I have ran my part, and I know everything is good to go. I can now put my proven program back onto my floppy. To do this, I will go back into my edit AUX mode. I will go to extend, hit extend again, MS DOS, and then I will hit extend one more time to go MS DOS, or to extend again, and I want to put it back on there. Let's see if I can find it real quick, program output. Program output, I want to go to my MD1 index. I want to select the program that I had. In case it alarms out, I will grab another program, say the 6027 is what I want to put on there. I will simply highlight it, push right to select it, and right again to put it onto my floppy disk. All right, with that done, I am ready to take my floppy drive out and go put it on my computer. When it comes to restarting this program in the middle of a program, you'll have to come see me and I will show you how to do that as well. However, for the setup, we have selected our program, we have loaded it, we've set our work offsets, we've set our tool length offsets, and we have successfully outputted the program that we are using. And that's how you do the setup on the Akuma Crown.